Repeat after me. Maybe you've ever heard this, um, this name from the Bible. The name is Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. Anyone ever heard of Zerubbabel? He's a guy in the Old Testament that was leading the Jewish people back home to the area of Judah after the uh, captivity of the Jewish people. And so when Zerubbabel came back, one of the first things he wanted to do was to rebuild the temple of the Lord. It had been destroyed and desecrated, and so he said, we're back in the land again, and let's build this back. But the people came back from exile. Even though they were glad to be back, they were discouraged. They had had a rough life, and the generations before them had had a very difficult life. They didn't have anything. They were penniless. They were coming back into a land where there, were no, there was no protection on the borders, and they had many enemies that were waiting to use this moment to come in. And so they are sitting there with no protection, no resources, no energy, no, no encouragement. And Zerubbabel saying, come on, let's rebuild the temple. And this is the days before machines and all the great things that we have to build things. And it was a lot of work to get the materials and to actually build it. And so God came to Zerubbabel with a simple and very potent message. And we read about it from the prophet Zechariah in chapter 4, verse 6. Very simple. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. God says, you've got my spirit. That's all you need. Now, if you're thinking about building something, you think, okay, I got God's spirit and that's all. I mean, that doesn't seem like a very good plan for building a building, does it? But yet, if you read on in the Old Testament, you'll see that the power of the Holy Spirit inside of them gave them everything they needed, and it came together. It was supernaturally. They couldn't claim that they did it on their own, but they could claim that God did it as he worked through them by the power of the Spirit inside of them. And so God was able to do that. And still, God today, he wants to fill us with his spirit, the actual third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, so that what can be accomplished in and through our lives can be something that we can define as supernatural. You know, we use that word to talk about all these eerie, creepy kind of mystical things, but supernatural really has a definition of being something that God can do. Something we can't explain because it's not natural. In other words, it's not part of our nature. But when God comes into our lives, he does something supernatural. He takes our nature and says, I'm going to create something. An energy that allows us to be able to give God glory through in ways that we could never dream or do on our own. Supernatural. God wants supernatural for all of his followers. Not just a special few, but he wants for them, all of us to live supernatural lives. And we've started a little series last week and this week talking about healing and supernatural. I mean, these things we can't explain, miracles and, and asking. And we come to God and we pray for God to do things that, that are beyond our capabilities. And so what we're asking God to do is to do the supernatural, above and beyond what nature has provided for us. But many Christians, they just survive. But God says, I want you to not just survive as a Christian, but I want you to thrive. I want your life to be full of supernatural. And you may be sitting there going, well, I just want a normal life. I don't want to get into this scary voodoo stuff. We're not talking about scary voodoo stuff. We're talking about God accomplishing his will and his work through ordinary us. Supernatural. So that we can thrive. In the New Testament, many, many, many years later, as the apostle Peter is talking to the church, the Christians, just like us, sitting together, worshiping God through Jesus Christ. He wants to give them a word that says you can live supernaturally as well. And this is what he says. He says, as each 
of you has received a gift from God, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the very words of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that everything, that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. That's the words to us. When we speak, we can speak the very words of God. We can take the truth and the understanding that God reveals to us, and we can speak it to other people to encourage them and to spread the truth around. There's a lot of lies and gossip and ugly stuff going around, but we can supernaturally speak words of God. We find the words of God in the Bible, in the truths that come from it, and we can speak those things into the world around us, with our kids, with our families, with our grandkids, at school, with our friends, at work, we can speak truth and life. And that is supernatural because those words come from God himself. We know that Satan is the father of all lies, but God is the author of all truth. And when we speak truth and we do it in love and we do it in a way that's encouraging people to see God, then we are, we are supernatural with our words. In our service, you know, with the strength that God, God supplies when we're helping and doing and we're using our hands and our feet and we're showing the love of God for serving other people. We do that with the strength that he provides. And that's supernatural as well. You know, the next weekend when we help the group born out there, it's not just standing out under the tent serving people. But we do it with the strength that he provides. And it can be a supernatural act out there under the tent. And everybody else walks by and they think we're just nice people from the church that are serving food. But no, we have a supernatural power of God that in everything we do, and you may think, well, I can stand there and do that. I don't need God to help me do that. But when we ask God to help us serve, we may find that we can do so with a strength and a power that we didn't have in our own resources. Challenge God. When you're serving the people around you, not just at the brute form tent, but what you're doing, ask God to supernaturally help you to serve and see what He will do. Because He wants to go beyond our natural abilities and help us do something beyond that. Sometimes God's asking us to do something or say something to somebody and we're scared to death and we can't do it on our own. Well, that's exactly what we need to be. We can't do it on our own, but we can do it. Through the supernatural work of God inside of us that allows us to be able to speak or to serve and to do those very things. Last spring, we went through a series looking at the early book of Acts. And we, sh- we saw how when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to give you the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that can be inside of each follower. And allows, I mean, we can do even more than Jesus did because Jesus was one person in one spot. But with all of us, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we live supernatural lives so that we can go beyond even what Jesus did. It's amazing what God can do through a heart that says, I'm open to God working supernaturally through me. Sometimes we get caught in, well, I can do that. I'll sign up for that. I'll do this because I can do these things. If we're just doing it out of our own desire and and strength, I would challenge us, go above beyond, and let it be done with God's abilities and God's strength. It's a, it's a mindset. It's giving glory to God and not in ourselves. Because I could say, wow, I went and I stood at the Broomcorn tent for six hours. I took two shifts. Aren't I great? Not that anyone would say that. But sometimes we think about it. Man, I went the extra mile. Man, I got up and took communion when nobody else stood up. And I did this and I did, you know, I did all these things. And I volunteered to do this and that. You see where it kind of goes? It's like, I did, I did. But saying, God, what do you want to do through me? So that it's supernaturally driven and not naturally driven. If we could start off our days with that mindset, wouldn't it be amazing what God could do through us? What he wants to do through us. And so, you know, we look in the book of Acts, how ordinary people... You know, that the 12 disciples were just ordinary blue-collar workers, but they turned the world upside down for God. 
Because the Holy Spirit was in them and helped them to be able to speak supernaturally. The people heard them speak and said, how could these uneducated people speak such beautiful words of truth that penetrate our hearts? You know, it was even in a place where, where the disciples could walk by somebody who was sick and the shadow would land on them and they would be healed. Wow. God did awesome stuff through these ordinary people because they, they trusted the Holy Spirit inside of them to work in ways that they couldn't on their own. If you didn't hear last week's sermon, I encourage you to go back online to listen to it because these two sermons kind of go together. Because what I say today, if you didn't hear last week's sermon, you might say, but what about this or what about that? Or if you heard last week's sermon and you didn't hear it today, then it, it kind of left with a little bit of a cliffhanger there. And uh, I don't have permission to give hour-long sermons, so I have to break them into two. And so that's kind of where this is going today, talking about just... Last week we talked about healing and praying for healing. And we talked about that. And the reason that we can pray for healing is because God is a supernatural God. He has, he has power over our bodies and our minds and our world around us that we don't have. But we can call upon that power. And we can say, God, pray within your will. Let your will be done and make your glory known through this situation. And God may supernaturally change the course of things into a way that people stand back and go, wow, the only explanation for that is what? God. We mentioned last week that healings preach a sermon. When somebody's healed, that's a live illustration of the power of God. And as Jesus said, to show you that I have the power to forgive your sins, get up and walk. He heals the body to show us we have a greater healing that we need, and that's of the soul. And all of us need to have the healing that comes from God in our souls. And so God is still supernatural God. He's the same God in the book of Acts that he is right here in Arcola in 2017. And as he is in Zambia and every place else in the world, he's the same God. And so going back again and looking at 1 Peter 4, 10 to 12, as each has received a gift, you may go, what gift? Okay, ask God. God is going to equip you. If you don't know already, he's going to gift you in ways to be able to speak and to serve. He promised that to every believer because the Holy Spirit inside of us. As we've received our gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the very words of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything, in everything, God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. As you know, if you've been coming to this church here, you know that every year I kind of ask God, God, give us a theme for the church for the next year. And the theme that we have for 2017, do you know that one? Remember it? I don't know if you put it up on the screen yet, but our theme is, put it up there, live it, show it, speak it. In other words, our faith, the gospel, the good news of Jesus, we need to live it through the example of our lives. We need to show it through our love and service to others, and we need to speak it to let the truth about Jesus permeate the world around us. And so a lot of our sermons and things we're doing kind of follow those themes. And even this little thing about, you know, the supernatural, this is part of living it and showing it and speaking it. Because God is a supernatural God and he, he empowers us to do it. You may think, I'm just an ordinary person. No one wants to listen to me and I don't have anything to offer. But no, you do. Because the Holy Spirit has given each of us a gift to supernaturally bring glory to God the Father. I actually already have a theme for the next year coming up. Even this summer, as I was already praying about it, um, it hit me where we should go. And the next theme for 2018, I wouldn't usually let it out this early, but I'll give you guys that you're here the chance to be able to get a preview for what you'll be hearing about in 2018. But the theme is Team Spirit. Team spirit is kind of a play on words. First of all, we're a team, but we also have the Holy Spirit that's made us a team and can do these wonderful supernatural things through our lives, working together in harmony with him. 
And so next year, we're going to be learning a lot more about the Holy Spirit and how to live by the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's a, it's a doctrine of, of Christian practice that, that can either get lost as people ignore it, or it gets overemphasized when everything is Holy Spirit and it becomes like we're worshiping just the Holy Spirit and we're forgetting the other things as well. So there are some, there's some abuses on both sides, but we're going to work to walk a middle line. What's it mean to really live with the Holy Spirit inside of us and to be a team? So you'll hear more about that in the future. You know, perhaps you've been to a healing service somewhere. There's churches that make, you know, instantaneous healings a part of their worship. There are preachers that go around doing these kind of things. And depending on our, our experience with that, we may look at that and go, isn't that wonderful what's happening? Or you may go, charlatan, I want nothing to do with it. They just want my money. And on both sides, there have been abuses of, of the gift of healing, um, but God wants to heal. And we have so many examples of how, through praying, God does heal. One of the things that we started doing, the elders of this church, when there's somebody who has something chronic going on that this, they need God's touch, we've gathered with them. And we've come around them, as it says in the book of James, and we've offered prayer for them that the faith of coming together would bring healing in their lives. I can't say that anybody instantaneously got healed through doing that, but we've seen some awesome stories about what God is doing through that kind of healing. And when we, when we do that, when we pray for them in that way, when that person's come to us and said, I want the prayers of the church, of the leadership. Not that we're more spiritual or anything, but there's a biblical precedent to say, let's come in faith. Just like people came to Jesus and said, will you heal me? You can come and you can ask for that. And we, we, put, a, we put a little drop of oil on the forehead that symbolizes the Holy Spirit is here. And we're trusting that he is capable of doing a supernatural ministry in that person's body and in their soul. And we want to see more wonderful things like that happen. I know a lot of people were praying for this young lady, Heidi. Judy knows her. Last week we mentioned this young mother gave birth to twins. One of the twins died, the other was in the, in the ICU, and she herself almost died. And she was, I mean, someone said 20% of her heart was working, something like that. When they transferred her to bars, yeah. 5%, they gave her very Okay, she just came home from the hospital yesterday or the day before. Okay, God, God heals. A lot of people came along this family and prayed, and God is going to do a wonderful thing in this family's life, both physically and spiritually as well. I, I, we don't know how God's going to work. And you say, well, I prayed for this person. They didn't get better. And we talked about that last week, how sometimes, sometimes healing is immediate. Sometimes it is eventual. And sometimes it's under God's will because of the curse of sin in our world that, that our healing comes ultimately. There comes a time when our bodies are going to not be healed from whatever it is. And the timing and all that, that's where we have to trust God. And that gets into last week's sermon a little bit. But, but God works supernaturally. And one reason that he doesn't work supernaturally is because, as it says in the book of James, it says... You ask and you don't receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Sometimes we ask God for miracles, not because of God's glory, but because of a selfish reason. And in that case, God's going to say, yeah. Now, is it selfish to ask for a loved one to get healed? No, that's not selfish. But it would be selfish to ask for things that benefit yourself for that sake only. And we don't want to do that as well. Also, Jesus reminds us in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. I mean, these are promises of God. We ask, and we seek, and we knock. And we see how God moves in those situations that we pray about, especially with the things that are supernatural to us, above our abilities. There's a passage from the Bible that's one of those that I said I'm never going to preach from, okay? But as I was preparing this, 
it kept jumping in my mind. I said, well, we're talking about supernatural. We're going to do it. In Mark 16, one of the last phrases of commands that God, that Jesus gave to his disciples, we read this. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. The reason is because the word snake is in there. So we're like, I don't want to touch that passage, you know. And of course, there's these weird people who pick up snakes to try to test God that they'll be okay with it. And that is totally abuse of what he's saying here. We know that there's an example. The Apostle Paul, when he was traveling, one time he was picking up some sticks for a firewood. And a snake was in the, the wood, and it bit him, but he was healed. We know that if you're doing what God wants you to do, and even if a snake bites you, it's God's total power to bring healing to that. You know, speaking in, in new tongues, we read about how the, the apostles, when they received the Holy Spirit, they preached the gospel in a language that people around understood, and they got to hear it for the first time. Back in the early 1900s, out in California, a revival broke out in one of the churches out there. And people were coming to Christ, but there were also many, many Chinese immigrants who lived in the area that didn't know anything about Jesus. And some of the leaders of this church suddenly began preaching the gospel in Chinese. They never studied it before. They didn't know it. And there was a revival amongst Chinese people. There was nobody to tell them the gospel. And God gave the ability to a non-Chinese speaker to be able to share the gospel with them. So it happens. When there's no other way for somebody to know, God will make a way, even if it's speaking a language that no one else understands. Casting out demons, okay, that's like these horror movies we've seen when we were teenagers, right? No. It's the ability. There's some people who are oppressed by demons or actually possessed by demons. And we have the ability with the power of the Spirit over those demons. Now, we don't really live in a, a culture that, where there's a lot of demonic activity, per se. There are some parts of the world where it's just rampant. And the Christians there, they regularly are casting out demons in Jesus' name. It's a real thing. I, I didn't know much about this, but before I went to Russia and I worked at a psychiatric hospital, and not to say that all psychiatric things are demonic, but one night I was working there, I worked third shift for a while, and there was a, a teenage boy that he heard all these voices that tell him, told him to do bad things and he kept getting in trouble and doing terrible things and he, was, he had to be on constant watch. So he was in a room where I was sitting right outside the door where I could watch him all night long as he slept. So I had to sit there in that chair and just keep an eye and make sure that he was safe. And he, half the night, he's just, he wouldn't go to sleep and he's just going back and forth and, you know, and he's just so restless. And after a while, I was sitting there, and I'm like, I felt so bad for this young guy. And just with my eyes open, just sitting there like normal, I was praying for him. I was saying, God, I don't know what's going on in this boy's life, but give him peace, give him rest, you know, deliver him from whatever it is that's causing that. And as I was praying that, he sat up, and he turned to me, and he said to me, is there a preacher around here? And I said, no, there's no preacher around here. But he said, but there's somebody in the next room praying for me right now. Ooh, <laughs> that's scary. He knew. How did he know? I believe there was something demonic, oppression. And when those demons heard the power of the prayers, they left him alone. And he turned right over and went right to sleep. You know, and I'm sitting there going, okay, I don't know what just happened. I don't know anything about this. But we have power over the demonic world and we can pray against it another time there was another young man that was there who was having similar problems and i just thought i'm gonna start praying for this young guy and so i would pray for him a lot while i was working there and even one night i wasn't even at work and i was at home and i was about to go to bed and all of a sudden i was struck with pray for ben pray for ben i just felt like i had to pray for it so i just started praying for ben as I looked back at the notes from the day before when I went in, during that time he was having a psychotic episode, and immediately at that very same time he calmed down. Uh, there was something demonic going on, 
and we have the power to do it. And I can't say I have a lot of stories like that, so don't like raise me up as the, the exorcist type person. But if God calls upon it, any of us can have power over the demons. We can do that. I believe it. Um, lay their hands on the sick, and they'll recover. And that's what we do. We lay hands on the sick. We lay hands through our prayers so that they can recover. We believe that God is a God of the supernatural. Anything he does is supernatural. It doesn't even have to be big, like healing somebody from a disease or casting out a demon. It can just be the fact that we get up each day and we live a life pleasing unto the Lord. And we carry the aroma of Christ with us wherever we go. And then when people interact with us, there's a sense that we're not just ordinary people, but we have God, the presence of God with us. That is supernatural living. And that's what God calls us to. So let's not be afraid of the supernatural. Let's embrace it. But let's use it for the glory of God so that people will be drawn, that the supernatural will be a, 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 a sermon. It'll be a way that people will get to know God. As God reminded Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord.